day, prospectors. Just driving out to one of our leases. Just got New Year's Eve out of the way, barely. And um, just heading out to one of our tenements that we're dry blowing. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Circumstances always dictates, but we'll get there. So Les and I did, um, I just want to have a quick chat. Les and I did a couple of um, uh, one day training courses down in Mandra um, about a month ago in December and had a, had a blast. It was, it, was, it was really, really good. Um, great bunch of people and, you know, I'm pretty confident that um, they all enjoyed and most importantly that they uh, all took away some really good information which will help them get onto, gold, uh, onto the goal. That's the, that's the idea. But one of the things that came up, which I thought was pretty interesting, was um, uh, a few people there that were looking to maybe get into a bit of machinery work at some stage were uh, looking at getting ground through SPLs, so special prospecting licences. And they were sort of under the, under the impression um, that it was a pretty easy process. It was, it was pretty much something that would be rubber stamped, which uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, so I thought I'd just go through a couple of the basics that sort of might help you out a little bit. Um, and the thing about a special prospecting licence, or a, I'll just call them an SPL, is uh, that they are a temporary tenement that can be placed over the top of an existing live tenement. They can go on to a prospecting licence, P, uh, an exploration licence, an E, uh, and even a mining lease uh, that we call an M. In the case of a mining lease, um, it has to be uh, with written permission from the underlying tenement holder. All right, so you can't do anything without their permission, which is fair and reasonable. Uh, in the case of a P or an E, you can place an SPL over a live tenement, an existing live tenement, uh, that's been live for 12 months or more, and uh, you can do it without anyone's consent, but at the same time, the underlying tenement holder can and usually will object to your application. So, very briefly, um, a SPL is 10 hectares or less, um, it is uh, for gold only and it can be, uh, it can only be held or applied for in a private individual's name, so no companies. Um, APLA uh, was uh, the ones that, that fought to bring this in um, a long time ago now and the whole reason behind it was trying to, uh, you know, get some small amounts of ground for alluvial miners to work um, and you know give, just giving us little blokes a bloody chance. Companies don't like it uh, for a number of reasons um, and when you put on an SBL application on most company ground it is a bit of a declaration of war so be, be prepared for it. Uh, they don't like it because um, it's their ground and you're coming along taking away 10 hectares of it all right and particularly if companies are putting deals together which most are suddenly you've got all these excise portions out of your tenement um, and it doesn't look good all right so it is a pain in the ass i won't go into actually how to peg them because uh, you peg them in the, the same way that you peg a prospecting license um, the, uh, the one variation to that is that on your Form 20 and your Form 21, you need to nominate the time period that you're applying for. And an SPL uh, is for a minimum of three months uh, and a maximum of four years and three month increments between the two. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 
so on, so on, up to four years. Um, you always apply for four years, uh, and basically on the bottom of your form 20 and 21, you put there that um, right, uh, term applied for four years. You need to nominate it. If you don't nominate it, it'll automatically run to a default, which is three months, and three months for an SPL is, is pretty much useless. Okay. Um, mainly because of weather events and other issues that, that you'll, you'll corner yourself and you won't get time to work. So um, if a tenement's been live for 12 months or more, um, as prospectors we can, we can put this 10 hectare uh, SPL over ground uh, on someone else's live tenement. Um, and the idea behind it is so that we can work the ground. With uh, an SPL, it's no different than any other tenement in that um, once you apply for, if, if the tenement is granted, you can then apply through the um, Mines Department, through the Enviro Division for what we call a program of works, and you can conduct um, ground disturbing activity. So basically, if there's a, a surface patch and you think it's worth it, um, you can mine it. So you can get in there with a bulldozer and, and work it for the alluvials. That's the whole idea behind it. Um, as I said though, the thing is that a few people sort of want to go down the SPL route. And look, I think that's partly because of the stage we're at with the, um, with the mining cycle at the moment. Uh, there's, there's, there is no decent ground available anywhere. So you need to be pretty good uh, at ground acquisition. Uh, you need to be very on the ball. You need to be up here in the gold fields, uh, no doubt about that. Um, and so on the surface of things, getting an SPL is, is an easy way to do it. Um, and in, in a lot of circumstances, getting an SPL is a good way to go. Um, however, you've got to understand that you sort of, it, it's a it's a bit of an aggressive act straight off. And the first tip I'd give you is that um, if you really want to push the ground, uh, before you'd even peg an SPL, go and talk to the tenement holder. All right, just uh, sit down and see if you can work something out. Um, it's far better to work under a tribute arrangement. Um, you know, you give them 10, 15% of what you find. It's far better to work under a tribute or an access agreement or some other um, sort of agreeable um, situation rather than picking a fight uh, with an SPL. However, um, there's plenty of cases where um, the company won't want to talk to you and, and uh, without being silly about it, Chinese companies are a classic example. They, they uh, really do not want to talk to prospectors and people. And certainly at the moment, because we're at the top of the the mining boom, uh, and there's plenty of money around on the on the on the share market, and companies are, are well funded at the moment. They don't want to talk with prospectors anyway. Um, remember that your time is worth money, so when you're talking with these companies, approach them in the right way. Uh, understand what they would need out of it, and the main thing is um, they need um, sort of. Uh, a bit of security from a liability perspective, so you need to get yourselves your own insurances, which is not always the cheapest option, but um, but what they really want is, if everything's nice and safe, is they want the expenditure. And to give you an example, when Lisa and I are just using a bulldozer, an excavator, um, uh, with our time and fuels and everything else, we'll be up around $40,000 a month in expenditure um, uh, that contributes to your Form 5 obligation. So. That's sort of what's in it for them, and that's your, your foot in the door. Um, the thing is that uh, you put your, uh, your SPL application in, and they, they almost without fail will object to it. All right, so um, the first thing's first, and that is that um, there is only basically two grounds that they can object to your tenement application. Uh, the first one is that um, your application needs to comply with the Mining Act of 1978 and its regulations of 1981. Um, 
So your mark out has to be 100% correct. Your paperwork has to be 100% correct. Your trenches, your, your stakes, everything has to be spot on. If they can find any fault with it at all, then they uh, will beat you in the warden's court. But making the assumption, I mean, if you don't get your mark out right, you're, you're pretty green anyway, you know, you're, like, you're pretty new to it. So um, you do your homework, ask the right people, make sure your mark out's 100% correct. Then the only other reason that they can uh, object to your application is on the grounds that your successful application, so if the SPL was to be granted, it would cause undue detriment to their exploration project. Okay, on that tenement. That's it. There is no other grounds for um, uh, for objection, and they will come up with. And when I say they, you know, like I'm, I'm having a go with lawyers and and that sort of thing, but they're just people doing a job like anyone else. So um, the uh, the lawyers will come up with uh, all sorts of grounds for objection, but when it distills down, it is only for the reason that I said, and that is um, that. The grant of uh, that application may cause undue detriment um, uh, to their exploration program. So the burden of proof is on the objector. So that means that they have to prove that your application would cause undue detriment. Um, and the thing is, that's all well and good, but you need really to be showing that it won't. Right, you need to be countering their arguments. And, and that's all a, a day in the warden's court is. It's a, it's a debate. Right? They're going to say that you will, you're going to say that you won't, and you need to be prepared for it. Um, the thing is that uh, usually the first, they've got a couple of main techniques, and, and we've sort of been through it quite a bit. Um, usually the first one is delay tactics, um, and they'll try and stretch it out for a couple of years. Uh, what I'd say is that, look, um, getting an education is always going to cost you money. Right? So don't pull your hair out about it. Uh, just understand that whatever dirty, rotten, filthy tricks that can be used against you, you can use against them. All right? You just need to know what the tricks are, and that's the education. That's experience. Um, you know, you've got to live life to get the experience. But the one thing they're going to do is, is start um, uh, threatening you with costs and threatening you with this and threatening you with that. And there's, there's two parts of the Mining Act that I'd refer to, and, and I won't go into all the, the actual exact details, come along and do our courses, and I do. Um, but the two parts of the Mining Act which back us up is that uh, in one of the sections, um, the, the warden is basically instructed or obliged to conduct uh, the warden's court as informally as possible. And I think informally as possible is the exact wording. Um, and so that means that for people like you and me that are not, we're not lawyers, I'm not particularly well educated, um, uh, you know, we can get up and have our say and have a go. Um, the, the other thing uh, is that uh, it's, it's very, uh, the law is very clear on, on another point and that is that um, each party is to bear their own costs. Okay? So what that means is you've got to hoof your own bill and uh, the company's got to pay their own bill as well. Unless uh, you can be deemed to be frivolous or vexatious at any point during the proceedings. And basically what that means is um, if you are frivolous, as the word is, so you're just making something that you're making, a, a, you're putting an SPL on uh, just to get it back at someone, uh, or that'd probably be more vexatious, which means you're having a go, um, or you're just doing stuff that's stupid, all right? That's the whole point, is that they can um, and they 
quite possibly will deem it either frivolous or vexatious, and that means costs can be award, awarded against you. So the way I interpret that is so simple, um, just be dinkum. All right? So if you play with a square bat, be upfront, be honest, um, then they cannot do you for costs. Um, uh, another thing I would say that I've learned is, is don't try and be a lawyer and don't try and talk like a lawyer, just be yourself. In virtually every um, case or every time in Warden's Court, I usually start things off by saying, Warden, um, I'm a prospector, I'm not a lawyer. Right? Um, and so when I muck things up or I get nervous or, or what have you, as long as I'm dinking about it, right, they can't do a bloody thing. And on that, that's the point, is that a company uh, can and will use a legal firm. Um, and a legal firm, a lawyer will be anything from 250 uh, to 500 bucks an hour. Right? So one of, the, one of the things that you can use um, um, to, to help you along in the warden's court is, is just understand that your time even though we should be putting a time on it, basically going to the warden's court, apart from your time and, and a little bit of extra, it, it basically won't cost you a cent. Um, whereas for a company, if it went through to fruition, um, I don't know, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for a case. Um, and that's not an in, insignificant amount. So, um, yeah, what, what I'd say is that you need to do a lot of research well and truly before you'd even peg an SPL. Um, and for me, what that, what that sort of entails is, is you need to be looking into the Form 5 expenditure reports, which you can get for, I don't know, 10 or $14, I think it is, from the Mines Department. You can get them online. So you can get a uh, a basic copy of their Form 5 expenditure to show and see where the, the money has been spent and if it has been spent. You need to look into the company's uh, financial records uh, and any ASX listed company have to, by law, um, be uh, posting all their information. Um, so all the ASX reports, all the quarterly reports, all their exploration reports for the length of the tenement um, absolutely is what you're doing um, I'll just you know I can only say how I do things it, it's it's neither right nor wrong but uh, it's all the that's all I've got to go on and, and I'll look very heavily into the company um, I will leave any SPL application as long as possible right? um, because every year that goes past uh, is another thing in my favor if they haven't done anything um, uh, I'm always looking for discrepancies between um, the ASX reports um, and what I'm seeing in their Form 5 uh, reporting. You know, I'm always looking for things that might give me a little bit of an edge if it comes down to it. The, the thing is that what I've learned is that um, you can't... It, 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 this is a funny, a funny statement, but it's... It's a bit true and, and it's actually something my dad taught me but um, you can't um, you can't beat someone that's prepared to lie under oath in the warden's court okay so if you've got a mob that are prepared to all of a sudden make up exploration reports and drilling programs and, and all these sorts of things and they do uh, and very large companies as well um, and that's going to be very hard to beat. So you've got to be prepared to um, cop a few on the chin, um, and it's not going to, not going to, may not quite happen for you. Um, I'd say that I'd say that the the vast amount of SPL applications fail, um, and it's almost always by people you know in their first second third fourth SPL application and they don't know what they're doing right I find that most people will crumple once um, uh, the letters start coming in saying we're going to do you for costs 
and that's usually where it's like, whoa, too hard, or it's dragged out for a couple of years, and they go, whoa, too hard. Um, if you are going to make an SPL application, um, my advice to you is just have a real good think about uh, whether you want to, probably mentally more than anything, is, is make that sort of commitment to be involved. Um, it's a it's a very important part of prospecting. It's a, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a really interesting part of prospecting, but um, it 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 will suck up time and energy, you know, mental energy to do it, particularly when you don't know what it is you're doing. Um, what I'd say is that if you can commit to saying right, I'll I'll take it to its fruition, um, then there's every likelihood that you will. Um, um, that you will get the, the SPL application because on a lot of occasions what will happen is at the very last moment, and it can be quite literally on the, the day of the substantive hearing, that um, the objector, so the company, will, will back down and say, right, oh, you can have it. The thing is, if, if, if they are drilling and if they are actively exploring in a certain area, um, then no, you're not going to get it because they can, they can, they can produce physical evidence that they're, they're working that ground, and rightly so, you know, because the idea is that it unlocks a bit of ground for us to work and mine from an alluvial point of view. Um, it should never be about getting up someone's nose and um, sort of taking away ground that that they are actually working. So, anyway, look, that's. I just wanted to run through some of the basics of it. Um, it, it can certainly work in your favour, but it'll certainly be a learning process and, and you've got to give yourself time for that. I'm going to get going and um, uh, get on and look at this site where we're working next and uh, just go through this creek here for now. Um, but experience is, uh, I think Oscar Wilde said that, experience is something you won't get for nothing and uh, that's pretty much what you've got to do is is just get the runs on the board. Um, Warden's Court um, is usually held once a month in, in most of the, the areas and you're very welcome to uh, go into the, the Warden's Court sessions and sit down the back and listen and learn. Um, I would strongly recommend it. I actually quite enjoy um, trying to nut all that stuff out so I, I, I don't mind it um, and what I'd say from you know if you, if you want to prospect full time <coughs> then um, you're going to wind up spending time in the warden's court it's it's going to be unavoidable I reckon anyway I hope that's been of some help we'll catch you see you prospectors